We've got some friends. Hey, I'm talent. Luis. And I'm Luis. You and you're listening to the control. Content is Profit One, two, podcast. Three, listen. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. If you'd like to learn more on how to turn that content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. There's a little surprise there for you. Go get it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah. There is a surprise. Wow, okay. It took, it took a while. <laughs> yes, go get it. Go to contentisprofit.com right now. Well, or after this episode. Guys, today we have one of our special, uh, one of our favorite couples in here. Absolutely. And you know, I'm going to be honest. I don't know if this hook that we're about to say right yeah. now mm-hmm. is going to bring justice to the conversation. But what we put in here was on a mission to help families around the world. Honestly, I think the topic is going to be uh, a little broader, broader than that. Yeah. It's going to be between, you know, mm. communication, relationships, marketing, content. So we'll see it, how it goes. It's going to be epic. I, yeah, it's, it's going to be, be epic. epic. But before we get started, guys, you know how it goes. A message from the sponsors, The Biz Bros, with Content Momentum. Guys, if you have long-form content just like this one that you're watching or listening right now, and you want to turn it into value-packed, bite-sized assets that then you can set into social media like little minions, right? Minions just getting clients for you. (laughs) Yes, they love the minions, guys. I thought I was muted. (laughs) I (laughs) love it. So all you need to do, guys, is just let us know. Send us a message at Biz Bros Co. on Facebook, on Instagram. And if you like the Minions, let us know as well. <laughs> yeah. Guys, don't forget, hit smash that subscribe button so you know when those episodes are dropping on your phone. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Biz Bros Co. That's that is right. right. And if you find this episode impactful, which I am sure you will because today's couple is their epic, uh, yeah. don't forget to share it and leave a five-star review. Sweet. 2v2 time. Today's guests are an epic couple. We met them through one of the masterminds we're part of, and soon after, we started working together. We often get asked, how do you guys work together? Well, we have the same questions and many more for today's guests. Do you imagine working with your wife? No, no, no. That, I, That's I, right, because you don't have a wife. I, I, want to read that, that, I want to read that part correctly. It says, do you imagine me working with my wife? Him. He has a wife. The only reason I don't say that is because she's now listening to these I episodes, know, man. I know. That's why, ah, I put, man. That's, that's why I put it in Come the on. intro. All right. After that, it says, whoa, I got the chills, right? But I, I, wa- I wanted to get him in trouble. <laughs> but guys. Since I'm single, I don't have that problem. That being said, today's guests help couples with their communication and ultimately a better relationship. I'm just going to put this in this way. I'm not even married, and I'm sold just by watching their content. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Absolutely. <laughs> also, they're not foreign to the power of content. One of them, you'll have to guess who, has worked over 18 years for Series XM and a host of their hard rock channels. Insert epic Ooh. guitar solo. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Some of the accomplishments include organize a sold out concert in Times Square, hosted live events with 30,000 people, and build a six figure business in health and fitness. That is all super impressive, guys. Ooh, I am baby. so excited. Please welcome the power couple, host of the One Relationship Show. I put here soon to be launched, but actually, they just launched it, right? Yes, Let's go. Yes. Kay and Tanner <laughs> Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I'm glad I commented right at the min. I love the minions part, right? And, and then, I didn't realize you unmuted us. <laughs> Absolutely. I gave you a warning. I'm like, hey, you know, yeah. you, you guys are actually going to be there. You know, it's just like tra- behind the cameras, yeah. but we can still hear you. So, you know, we encourage that. We yeah, encourage yeah. people to laugh and be with us. It's okay. It's you, okay. You it just happens. made it like 10 times better I with know. that comment. So I know. I totally you. sold it. We're a client and I love how you, uh, I love how you communicate. The minions are such a good visual. For what you do. I know we, we're gonna have to Thank do you. like an animation yeah, you, or something. You know, like we've been testing this message for the from the last episodes, and we actually had somebody else say too, like, I have a kid <laughs> and they love the minions. They I think minions. It's, it's a great representation. So, you know, I think yeah. that's gonna be the hook we're gonna use <laughs> in our funnel. On. Yeah. You guys, guys got it. you got it. <laughs> Let me tell you how excited I am. I'm like, I can't believe we haven't had the, have these guys on yet. So welcome to episode 85. I can't wait to dive in because you are doing such 
like wonderful things and uh we're very fortunate to to have you guys part of our adventure as well so why don't you guys go ahead and and tell us a little bit you know who you guys are who's Turner who's Kate uh, I'm, I'm guessing you know that the woman is Kate just saying uh, <laughs> but like you how, never know these we days, never know right? we don't know but like how how do you guys like get into this thing together and you guys are creating such a massive impact um, I'm curious how did everything start me okay <laughs> so uh yeah this is actually um one of my favorite stories to say or to tell because we both were in such different places in our lives when we met tanner was coming out of a divorce a single dad living in colorado i was in new york city single professional working in radio living the rock star kind of life and i was looking for a relationship and and looking for marriage and and building a family mm. tanner was not coming out of a divorce <laughs> but we both were very very passionate about uh growing and yeah. wanting to develop ourselves and knowing the past that we had we didn't want to repeat that so we we were definitely each at individually at that space and we met at a uh, what we kind of call like a personal development type seminar. It was out in La Jolla, California. Yeah. Bo Eason, our mentor, we love him. He's amazing. He and his wife, Dawn, do tremendous work. And we were at this three-day weekend event where we were just started doing work. We started figuring out the power of our story and seeing how that can build Absolutely. and create connection with people. And that was how we met when we uh, came out of that three-day weekend and said, okay, uh, we're going to work with a, a year mastermind with Bo and his team. And that was sort of just the start. We <laughs> realized that we were sort of in the same industry and we said, hey, let's be accountability partners. And in your proposal too, you're like, we went from accountability, uh, accountability partners to accountability partners plus plus <laughs> like, this is gradual. what i'm seeing you know i'm and seeing tanner smile as you tell the story i think it's all part of his plan i can see yeah, it there, right. tanner. <laughs> all, the whole strategy uh, all right yeah so, no it's yeah. and and like kate said it, you know and and what's interesting I, I think something that's been on my mind a lot is proximity is power right you guys yeah. mentioned that we met as part of a mastermind kate and i met um because it wasn't the three-day event we were at this three-day event we went through the entire event i guess we saw each other because there were only like a hundred and some people yeah it wasn't until we were actually at this after party uh event for the people that had committed to to working uh for a year in a mastermind and um you know we were uh, as Kate said, I was not divorced. She had come out of a long-term relationship and we were really focused on ourselves and, and like figuring out who we are and what we wanted to do. And quite frankly, sort of this next phase of our career, I, yeah. I told you guys in the, the behind the scenes, like I'm an introverted, <laughs> uh, awkward it guy that, that got <laughs> life turned upside down on me, you know, in, in my late twenties, thankfully through divorce and a lot of pain and, and challenges yeah. that caused me to really take a look at like, what do I want to do with my life? What do I stand for? And it's led me down this whole journey. Um, you know, and we started in, we were hawking, uh, health and fitness products. Uh, yeah. we were in network marketing and that's how we got started together. And it's really evolved. Um, into this whole other business uh, that uh, that we're doing now. Wow, that's amazing, Kate. Anything? I know you. We like interrupted you there halfway through the no. story. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it. Well, and I I think it's just important to recognize that you know as we were looking to develop ourselves, which I don't think most people most people don't really want to do that. Most people don't really want to do the work and say, mm, why is my life? You know, just, mm -hmm. and, and I was, I was there for many years. I had a really great life actually, but I, I, I couldn't understand why I wasn't finding the right guy. I couldn't understand why, you know, things were, weren't working out for me. And I had all this debt and all the, and, and finally, and it was actually because I, I joined this health and fitness company uh, that they encouraged uh, personal development yeah. and reading books that, you know, would just help you grow. Uh, Cause I didn't really know anything about it before that. And quite frankly, I thought of those <laughs> books as like self-help, like those are for Fluff. like screwed up people, you <laughs> yeah. know? And I'm like, I'm yeah. not screwed up. Um, and yeah. quite frankly, like we can all improve. Everyone mm -hmm. can improve in some area. We don't have to be sick to get better. You don't have to be broken to be fixed sort of thing. It's just, we can all improve in some way. And I yeah. recognize that I needed to improve. And so I read this book called The Compound Effect 
by Darren Hardy. And it was actually both of our first uh, personal development so books awesome. that we each read before, you know, before we knew each other. And I, I read that book and I can't tell you how many times out loud, I'm like, oh, so that's why it's happening. Oh, yeah. that makes so much more <laughs> sense why I'm not getting this. And I really had to start making changes. And mm. uh, if you want something different in your life, you have to start doing something different. And that's yes. what I did. You know, I, I didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. I didn't know how the journey was going to go. I didn't yeah. know what to you know expect just that I, I had to do something differently because I didn't like where, where my life was leading. Absolutely. Wow. You know, yeah. that, that, that is, that is very powerful. If you want to change it, you need to do something different. And there's a lot of people that they want change, but they are not willing to change themselves or, right. or start doing things differently. Right. And right. I can totally relate. I feel like I was one of those people that I was like, Oh, like <laughs> I want to have these results in business yet I was always doing the same. And for me, the same was, you know, going in the habits of pretending that I was working, sitting in the computer and then getting <laughs> distracted. And I was like, why is this not working? You know, I'm spending eight, eight hours in front of the computer doing things. But yeah, out of those hours, how many am I actually doing something, right? Yeah. right and right, I mean, right. not even to like personal life like that's a whole new monster as well right i right. feel like i feel like i'm discovering that side of me lately i know um for those single <laughs> ladies listening i broke up a few months back so i'm doing please, my, my inner work so please, i can be ready please reach out he's ready he's Do ready <laughs> Shout, shout out, right? What a plug. Oh, I, know. Intro, like, I know. I know. Just throwing that out there. Wow, you know. Fonzie. <laughs> he's blushing right now. You can't tell, but he's really blushing. Yeah, I'm the same color of my shirt. If you want your content minions or a date with Fonzie, hit Co the DM. Comment, ha hashtag Fonzie right there in the yeah. comment. <laughs> no, I, I think like your story is so powerful too because, you know, uh, sometimes we go through life, right, like mm -hmm. with with these like group of people, right? And uh, we're used to hanging out with that group of people and uh, thinking like that group of people, right? It happened to me, right? And I was like really, really scared when it got time to level up because I was like, wow, I don't really know what to expect. Uh, should I still have this group of people, right? And, and it's just like, sometimes it, it's necessary. Not Nothing against personally with that group of people. They're still my friends. But if I need to level up, I need to operate at a different level, right? That they might not be in because they don't really want to be in that place, which is okay, but I do. Wow, what is my next step? And for us also, it changed everything with environment, right? We, we had to put ourselves in an environment where we were challenged, where we were guided, where we were like, hey, this is exactly what you guys need to do to get to the next level, which also included, you guys figure it out, right? It's like, <laughs> hey, go actually execute, figure it out, like go execute again, fail, or how we call it now, is, is it samples? What was it? Yeah, right. samples. Samples, not failing, Just it's just a sample, right? Just learn pretty Love quickly ah, that's good. And, and move along, right? So... It's so amazing to see you guys meeting in this kind of environment. You're like, okay, let's be accountability partners. And now let's let's build something awesome together. Yeah. Accountability partners yeah. plus plus. Plus plus. <laughs> plus, plus. <laughs> now I got to ask because we, yeah. we get this question every single time we're on an interview. It's like, how can you guys work together? Like, obviously we're <laughs> brothers, right? But you guys are a couple now. And you guys, you know, mm. have a beautiful family together. I'm like, how how do you guys do it? I I can definitely, I, <laughs> I cannot do this with my wife. We've actually had this conversation like two days ago. Uh, the funny part is like she did not get offended. She's like, absolutely no, I cannot work with you. <laughs> <laughs> how do you guys do it together? Yeah, how do you guys do it? Some couples can't. Yeah. It's a, it's a good question, and, and quite frankly, launching this podcast <laughs> has really <laughs> tested that. Um, you know, the, I think I think the the reality is um, not every day is a, is a great, glorious day, and, and I think we do our best to be as, yeah. you know, transparent as possible. Um, but I think to answer that question and to sort of tie it in with what we're seeing with a lot of uh, the clients we're coaching from a relationship perspective is it's about having a long-term vision yeah. and it's about having common things um, in mind of where we're going. And, and that to me, I think takes some of the, for lack of a better term, sting mm. off of the day-to-day -day disagreements. And so we know like we, we didn't five years ago, six years ago when we met, it's not like we're like, oh, this is what we're going to do and we're we'll launching a podcast and we're going to help couples. We were just like, hey, <laughs> we want something different for ourselves. We were so impacted by 
uh, you know, taking control of our own health and fitness by starting an online business on our own where we were in control of our money and, and not somebody else. We both yeah. worked, you know, very good paying um, corporate jobs. And uh, and there was such an empowerment in in doing something on our own and taking the next step and the next step. And so uh, we've been you know, challenged, just like you guys mentioned, right? We've been challenged by uh, a few of our mentors in in particular to have that long-term vision. Our mentor, Bo Eason, where we, where we met, he talks about having a 20-year plan for your mm-hmm. life. And uh, we've, we've sort of condensed that down to 10 years because I think that, uh, I think for a lot of people, it's hard to think about 20, 20 years in Sometimes the future. Sometimes it's hard for even five years for some yeah. people. But it is, yeah. but I also would say, but, yeah. hey, we can all think back to 2010, right? Mm-hmm. Like I bet everybody remembers something about 2010. And so just that easily, you can think forward to 2030. And so we adopt that mindset and we're like, okay, we know where we're going. We know where we're focused. And um, we've had, had to learn uh, about our strengths and and the things that we're not so good at. And, yeah. and we are very different people, uh, which oftentimes yeah. works out really well. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't. Not so much. Uh, but we, we, we keep the end in mind. We keep the yeah. future in mind. Yeah. And I think we communicate well. And so, yeah, so. and I was going to say, that, just to add to it, that we remember that we love each other mm-hmm. and that our goal mm-hmm. really is is the is the focus like we love each other and we're we are working towards the same thing so you know with tanner talking about vision like we have the vision we're working towards the same thing uh we know where we're going and that we came into this marriage because we love each other Absolutely. we are not going in with past um to make the past uh past mistakes we're here to change that and move forward learn from what has happened and just move forward so, uh, so cool. remembering you know and this again with some of the people we're coaching it, you have to remember why you married the person in the first place especially yeah. when it's so many years down the line and you're like just stuck in this triage of the day like the kids and this and this and then you didn't do this and she did that and blah 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 it's like well yeah you're 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 fixing the one little issue for that moment yeah. that has this hole underneath to it because you haven't addressed stuff for so long yes. so it's like yeah let's you know let's handle things on a day-to-day basis work through it remember we love each other and say okay let's let's keep ourselves focused on the future i'm gonna add one more thing yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that <laughs> and that is uh be, be you know it's personal to me is that i grew up uh in a in a family my my mom and dad ran a business together for 25 years yeah wow. uh, i never really saw them uh argue a lot i did see them argue though i did see them have disagreements both about business and family and uh, unfortunately, when the, they sold the business, they got a divorce within a year. And so wow. in my mind, I came from a blueprint where I thought like, oh, um, you don't want to own a business with your spouse because I saw what happened to my parents. And I saw like when the business sold, the marriage dissolved and all these things. And so I, I would also just say for myself personally, it's been somewhat of a, a challenge in a way of like something to overcome, a stereotype wow. to overcome mm. that uh, their marriage had failing had nothing to do with business ownership yeah. or business sales wow. or any of that other stuff. I've been able to separate that. Um, but I think for people that, again, may have, uh, you know, preconceived notions, whether it's from a family business or whatever, um, your past and your family's past does not have to define whatever you want for the future. Yeah. So powerful. Wow. You know, Kate, you said, I love what you said about reminding yourself and each of you that you love each other, right? Yeah. Kind of like, because sometimes we just let problems, like little things escalate, get in the Mm -hmm. way, right? And then we lose that focus that you were talking about, that vision. And that is so important. You know, I feel like, I think my brother and I, we do a pretty good job at that, at like coming together and, you know, punching each other and be like, I love you, bro. Uh, uh, that's, why, that, that's why we have glasses today, you know, pro, you yeah, know eyes. Not, but okay. but, but we, we, I feel like we do a pretty good job, but we have definitely noticed in some other people that they let their problems escalate a little bit more, right? And like, yeah. And I think it's that lack of communication, right? I mean, what you said in the in the, the form that you said, you guys help uh, couples communicate better, right? So they can have a right, better relationship. Yeah. And it, it's just fundamental. Like the, the more 
I spent in in the business, like trying to grow the business, the more I realized the value of effective communication. Absolutely. Like it has yeah. grown so much on the last five years that we started our first business uh, to what it is today. And I think it is key for any for everything, yeah. right? And then Tanner, yeah. sorry, I know you want to say something. Th let me say it. Yeah, okay. wait your time, wait your time. <laughs> See, guys, communication, communication. Right, right, there we go. Yeah, we go through the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, those are the challenges of running a podcast with a co-host, uh, guys. Yeah, it's all good. So, Tanner, <laughs> you also mentioned, you know, th those beliefs. And those are so important because sometimes yeah, we yeah. just let those old beliefs dictate pretty much the rest of our life. So, something that I've been facing lately in the last year i would say is kind of like looking back and say what are my beliefs that were instilled in me through experiences or what other people have might have said of me in the past and how is that affecting me today and how can i change it and turn it into new beliefs so that's definitely a, an interesting look right that someone has to do in, in inside and it's not easy it's not easy to go back and be yeah. accept certain things like wow you know like i used to do this all the way because of x y and c and now i i need to change that and change again comes by what we said at the beginning started doing things differently so right. it, it just like escalates and it, it, it it's an interesting process so thank you for bringing that up yeah absolutely yeah. you gotta pick your heart yeah, yeah that's right I, i i well yesterday like this is very fresh right like it's sun like as in we're recording now this is monday yesterday sunday we're involving this amazing charity that i think we overshot the things that we wanted to do right and then <laughs> I get pretty angry every time I'm not in movement, that I, I'm not like moving forward on momentum, right? So weekends tend to be really challenging for me, even though I'm mm -hmm. spending time with my family, but I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not moving forward on the business or the things that we got to do to keep this thing rolling, right? So I, then I get pretty angry and you know, you cannot, it's like hangry, uh, but a different level. <laughs> so yesterday, right? Fonzie goes, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm going to be in this coffee shop doing some work. And I didn't even want to like think about it because I was so frustrated that we couldn't, we were not executing what we said that we were going to execute. So I'm like, okay, let me go meet him over there. So I go, I went to the coffee shop and I sat and started working and he goes like, are you okay? I could feel the, the, the energy the, bubble the energy around bubble. him. I was and, like, oh. And this is a perfect example because before <laughs> I don't think I would have said anything. I would have just like stay quiet and just like do my own stuff. And then more angry because he was not executing on things that I was thinking, which is insane to think about but then i was like look dude i am overwhelmed right i just gotta sit down take a deep breath i'm overwhelmed with the amount of things that we gotta do right we're onboarding new team members we're having all these processes that we uh, were designing and on top of that we have this charity amazing thing but i don't know why we said yes to this thing because it's like oh my <laughs> gosh it's so much right and then he's like dude don't worry i got you like go go home like go see your kid i got this and he got it and it's incredible how just like one little phrase like that they're like just like open up and be like hey i, I need help and it's so important mm -hmm. uh, and yesterday was a perfect example of that so thank you fonzie you're uh, very welcome <laughs> and thank you guys for bringing that topic because bringing it into the the business side of things or yeah. or content or, or any kind of team is so important to have that now what is like maybe one element that you see in in different either couples that you guys coach or team that you guys work with that prevents them from making that change to a better communication. Mm. Mm. I'll, uh, I want to start this because I want to just tack on real quick to that last comment, uh, something that I've had uh, to do for myself mentally. And I think this is, is important, you know, for high performing individuals like you that are, you know, you're business minded, you've got things going. And so the weekends or, you know, yeah. quite frankly, for, for me, it's, it's even mornings and evenings where um it's like oh we got the and and our two-year-old's waking up like <laughs> insanely early now like earlier than she ever has so the mornings are blown up just like everything and it occurred to me i don't know this is a few weeks ago now but i was like i invest between three and five thousand dollars worth of my time every day into my kids mm -hmm. if i value my time the way that I, that my time is worth and i think about how much time i'm spending you know with my kids and so you know, somebody may be like, well, that's kind of an effed up way to look at it. I, listen, I don't care if I, I, I have to, from a business perspective, I'm thinking about what's not happening in the business when I'm with my kids. I just had to get myself right and be like, yeah, yeah dude, but you're putting in like $20,000 of, of time investment in your kids every week. 
So think about what that looks like with the compound effect over time yes. versus uh, if you don't do that <laughs> and your kids yeah. are going to, you know, your kids are going to cost you way more in the long run Absolutely. if you don't freaking help your kids in the early stage. So yeah. I, <laughs> I just, I wanted to address that because I could so relate. And like I said, this is just wonderful. like a mental thing that I, that I had to come to that I think helps for for business owners. Um, I'll, I'll let you go first because I think you wanted to say something. Well, thank you for of, that. Uh, I appreciate questions. it. That's a good, that's, that's good info. <laughs> you can, you can take it. that little yeah. nugget. And yes. <laughs> Kate, be, be, sorry, be, before yeah. I love, yeah. I lose my train of thought here, just a comment yeah. regarding what, what Tanner just said. <laughs> Dude, I remember, so we have an older brother, right? He is from, <laughs> from my dad's first marriage, but we yeah. grew up together. He's we, not Luis. We He's love him. Luis. His name is not <laughs> Luis, that's true. And when he had his first child, right, I remember we were at the house, and something happened with the kid, and my dad was like, hey, Mario, his name is Mario. And he's like, let the kid, you know, be, cry. Uh, don't pamper him right now, because it's better for him to cry now than for you to cry when he's older. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't know why. I mean, I'm telling you, I, at that moment, I was probably, what, like 12, something like that, like 13, 14. And that comment just stuck in my head. for, And I was like, wow, that is so important. And I related that to life, not only like kids, obviously, because I don't have any. Um, that we know. Uh, hashtag single. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I'm like, wow, like that is so impressive, right? It's, it's keeping yeah. that long run, not the... Not the immediate gratification, but like what is in for the long run if I do this right now? Mm. So thank you, Tanner, again. Sorry, Kate. Yeah. All right. It's no. all you. Mike to Kate. And, and we've, we've learned from our therapists, too, that with, with children like that, like for, for the parents who might be listening and they have small kids, like they kind of they have to go through that tantrum. And there's a whole cycle thing to it where you like the more you talk to them and the more you maybe want to try to grab them or maybe console them or like whatever's going on, like. You just make it worse and they stay in that cycle of just tantrum, yeah. tantrum, tantrum. So you, we've just we've learned the like, I can't understand you right now, but I'm ready to talk to you when you can calm down. Yeah. And then this way, the kid will just have their tantrum, let them freak out, know that you're there when you're Whenever when they're, they're ready. ready. And like they eventually just will calm down on their own and then you can address what happened. So yeah. I think it's just a really important thing for parents who, who might be listening that, yeah, the tantrums are going to happen. Our children are no exception to that. And, uh, and there's, there is a way to work through it and uh, better for them to right figure it out now than later. Um, what was the question? Yes. What's the problem? <laughs> I, I literally was typing it because I'm like, <laughs> they're probably going to ask me back. So here we go. So, <laughs> So with with the communication thing, right? Like we apply it to to business. You know, we told that story of what happened. What is like the number one thing that prevents people or teams to actually go out and 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 take action with that communication, and have success with this? What is the one thing that you guys see with everybody that you've been coaching that prevents them from doing that? I think part of it is not having a supportive spouse. Mm. Uh, and the fear of what that would entail. I, I also think that they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They don't know. My, my, my life is spinning out of control. I don't even know how to get my head above water at this mm. point to even look at something that could possibly be part of a solution. So, I, I mean, that's that's a lot of what I've encountered and some of the women that I've had you know, more one on one conversations with. And uh, they they feel so you know stuck and yeah. just don't know what to do or where to start, especially because many of the situations that we've ex like we've been dealing with. Like this is ongoing now for years. So it's like, where do you start? You know, we're, <laughs> we're, we're a, a newly married, you know, we're only three years into the marriage. And if, yeah. if it was only three years of just some chaos, like we could probably figure out how to backpedal it a little bit and get, and get to some resolution when you're 20 years deep, like, what do you do? So yeah. it's, um, I mean, those, those were two things that really just stood out to me. I don't know if there was something else. Yeah. I've got a couple of different, different thoughts. Yeah. Uh, two things, responsibility and expectations. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> no, so it's huge. when when I was going through uh, my divorce, I had many uh, reasons and and events that I could point to that my ex wife was in the driver's seat of uh, for why the marriage didn't work out. Mm. And I was confronted with the fact that 
if I let her be responsible for the reason the marriage doesn't work out, then what am I going to do in the next marriage? And, and I actually, um, uh, was just making a video about this, that, uh, if you are put your responsibility outside of yourself, even if you are wronged, even if you are wronged and, and Grant Cardone, I've heard Grant Cardone say this a few times where he's like, even if you get rear ended at a stoplight, you can find your responsibility in that because yes. you could have left at a different time. You could have taken a different route. You could have had your clients come to your office. Like, why are you out driving to other people? Like there's so many different yeah. ways. And so I was challenged with figuring out how am I responsible for these situations that I felt like happened to me. And the sooner I found that responsibility, the sooner I felt freedom to be like, Oh, I was responsible. It's not good or bad. I and, and and that leads me to my second point, which is the expectations, is that I think so many people have uh, views in their head of what their life and what their marriage and what their parenting is supposed to look like mm -hmm. based on history. And we've heard something that drives us is that any change that you make about your uh, behaviors and sort of the patterns of your family, any change that you can make uh, will have an impact for the next seven generations. That's mm. huge. So if you so put that into context, yeah. our lives are basically being run by the expectations that were created of our ancestors from a couple hundred years ago. Wow. And you think like, oh no, we live in 2020 and we're all smart on our, you know, cell phones and we've got the internet. And it's yeah. like, but if you really look at like, okay, why do you believe that? And why, cause we parent very differently. Like kids want to flip out. Like Kate was saying, fine, flip out. Kids want to, you know, stick their freaking fingers into a, a light socket. Fine. They'll find out soon enough that they shouldn't do that. Right. Like, I mean, so everything within safety, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. the safety of our children are definitely the top priority. I'm, However, I'm not, I'm not pushing them off the roof of the house, yes, but yeah. I'm just yeah. saying like, we we yeah. allow our children to have boundaries to yeah. where they can get hurt and where they can experience pain. Mm. Uh, and and I see so yes. many parents that are like, ah, oh, oh, don't it's do that. It's the helicopter parents, right? Yeah. Like watching over. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, how, and, and somehow that there's a perception that you're a bad parent because your kid's crying in Target or because... <laughs> You know, they, they, they freaking bit <laughs> another kid at school, like whatever. And I'm just like, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I'm not in control of them. You know, like exactly. I'm doing my best that I can here. I love but it. I think people get so wrapped up in like the expectations of their family. And quite frankly, that's why I got married and divorced and, and freaking blew up my love life in, in, in my twenties, because I had a blueprint that like, I needed to get married marriage sucks but you mm. got to do it and if you're just going to be miserable like all of these things that were running me yeah and i'm like well god no wonder i had a horrible marriage that ended in divorce because i ca i came from an environment where that was basically what i learned was how it went yeah so i think a lot of people have expectations that they don't even know are running them and uh the sooner you can take responsibility for everything including the samples, right? I think whether yeah. it's business or life or anything. Yes, yes. Well, I, I was about failures. I love running failures. Yeah, so. I, I was about to mention yeah, that. Right. You know, you guys are like obviously. I, I love this because you know, yeah, obviously, as a parent, I, my Luca is sixteen months old, and same thing, right? He's crying. Go cry, right? Uh, you know. You, he fell down. He fell down. He's gonna get up anyways. You know his knees are all scratched up. That's fine. He's gonna he's gonna learn yeah. to lift his feet, right? He's gonna be okay. And uh, and I relate it. You know, if we draw a line next to like private life to business life, right? The, if we own our own business, that's the extension of our private life in in, in so many ways, mm -hmm. right? And just yeah, like yeah. we deal with relationships, right? Like our staff, we have relationship with our staff, with our team, right? Mm -hmm. Our partners, mm -hmm. we have relationship with our partners. So why does that have to be separate? And uh, instead of like putting them together and applying the same principles with those, you know, once we started to do that, at least on our end, and we're still in the learning on learning mode and, you know, yeah. improving every single day. But how am I responsible? Right. Well, maybe I'm, I'm not. Resp I'm sorry. Maybe we didn't have success in this because there was no plan. Right. I didn't explain the plan well enough. We had an, a sample uh, this morning with one of our team members right on the design team. And uh, so we got some content back. And we're like, well, personally, like, we don't feel like this is something that we can send out to our guests, right? Like, because we don't, we don't feel proud enough 
that this goes out. So we had a conversation and uh, we took responsibility. We're like, like, this is on us because we didn't, we gave you some guidelines. You went with them. Well, now this is how we're adapting and everything is okay. You know, and some yeah. people might have really challenging times uh, having a conversation like that. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. I, I love the whole responsibility and expectations, you know, responsibility first. If you are not claiming your own responsibility, you're just handing the power to somebody else. You're literally saying the way I feel depends on on you, right? Whether you do this or that, yeah. which is huge because if we want to, you know, live our own life and control our own thoughts and, and power, we need to take responsibility on everything. And then I love the expectations part because... I know this this may be debatable for some for well for a lot of people probably, and I do because I hear all the time it's like expect ex, there needs to be some expectations and stuff like that. <laughs> I think for certain things maybe yes right, but this is my personal take on expectations. Expectations if they are met they take away like the excitement of accomplishing that one thing, right? Of accomplishing, because it's like, oh, it's what it was expected, right? So good that you did it. If you fail, right? Like if you didn't meet that expectation, it's going to be massive, massive disappointment. And it's probably going to fall back into the resp responsibility bucket, right? I was like, oh, okay. Just either blaming somebody else or then you can fall into a negative loophole of like, oh, I'm doing this. Uh, I didn't meet all these ex expectations, right? So that is my personal view on, on certain Just expectations. Just so you know, I do not agree with what he says. Yeah, by yeah. The way. So, so this is a beautiful had, thing. We, we actually had, uh, yeah, yeah, we had a similar <laughs> we had a similar thing. And so uh, I, I, I'm much more like Fonzie. I'm just like, hey, you know, like, <laughs> and, and so what we what we came to, though. Go is Team Kate. A, go Team yeah. Tanner. Let's go Tanner. <laughs> team No Expectations. Let's go. <laughs> Hashtag expectations. Let's go. <laughs> Um, but, oh, we but, got the crowd, Kay. We got the crowd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see. I'm not seeing the comments in Streamyard here, so I'd love to see the. I'd love to see the hashtag expectation. Yeah, right that would be but, awesome. Um, um, you know what we came to on that? Just one note to pause there is um, sort of a I don't know a, a different frame on like okay, there are things that we're committed to. Yeah, right. We're committed to each other, and we need to follow through on our commitments. Yes. And then there are things that are these sort of um, what I what I sort of traditionally view as like, you know, expectations or unwritten rules, ways I, of being that Kate expects for you know if, me to do something. And well, I'm like, well, and, I don't even know that it was. Well, I yeah, never committed I was say, to it. You didn't communicate it. And that and that's that's the thing that I have learned when it comes to expectations, because I don't I don't necessarily think that they're a bad thing. Yeah. Just being aware that, like, you know, Fonzie, you said it's they may happen, they may not. And know how you're going to react and, re you know, you're going to respond to that, whether it, it happens or not. Yeah. What I have learned and I've been now better about, particularly with Tanner and his viewpoint <laughs> of expectations <laughs> is there's something that's called unspoken expectations. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think I, f I, I fell into, or not, I think I know I fell <laughs> into uh, for many years was this this unspoken expectation and i think a lot of people do fall into that category and that's where it starts to get more sketchy yeah. and that's where you can start to have you know the friction and and your and the arguments and things like that because if i'm expecting tanner to do something or to say something and i have never yeah. said anything to him ever before other than it's just how i thought it should always be that's not fair to him Absolutely. to just able to assume that and therefore it's on me taking responsibility right yeah. to be like oh okay so now i understand why he didn't do this or say that or whatever yeah and therefore i i you know i should be better about communicating things um the one thing that i would say is that once i've now said it a few times maybe <laughs> i could expect him to remember <laughs> to do that or not do that and maybe we can work on let's that put yeah. it on the calendar Tyler. <laughs> Kata, there's, a, there's a there's a there's a there's a meme that i saw recently that i showed her that was oh, like funny. if a man says he'll do something around the house he means he'll do it his wife doesn't need to remind him every six months <laughs> 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 That's awesome, yeah. yes that is, that is yeah, cool sometimes. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's kind of. Yeah. I, feel, I feel like that meme can apply for her mom, too, when she oh, was said to us to, to do certain things. <laughs> and, Kate, you know, I'm loving what you said about the unspo unspoken expectation. Because yeah. I feel like mo no, mo I'm not going to talk I in general, but personally... A lot of the times when I've dealt with ex expectations, they have been unspoken expectations, right? And yeah. actually, yeah. so I took the liberty right now of going on into Google and say, D D you. define oh, expectation, man. right? And it <laughs> yeah. says, it is a belief that someone will or should achieve something, right? It, it doesn't really say there to communicate it to someone, right? right. It, it, like even the definition here, it kind of talks about that unspoken expectation. And then you guys yeah. were also talking about commitment. So mm -hmm. I think the bridge in between those, it's actually communication. Just like <laughs> letting so, the yeah. other person know like, hey, yeah. we are going to do this X, Y, and C, or, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, so again, it comes back to yeah. communication yeah. is go, king. Go, going back to yeah. what happened yesterday, right? In my head, we had that unspoken communication where like I expected Fonzie to take action on this thing, but I never communicated. Right. So it was like, okay, you know, why am I being this stupid and not even like telling him that this is exactly how I feel. Right. So that's what like brought me down. I'm like, okay, let's have this conversation. And he's like, bro, like that takes me two seconds. Of course I'll do that for you. Right. And and then, you know, it took three hours, but that's a different thing. <laughs> uh, but, but he did it. Right. And it was, it was awesome. And then, you know, he came back and we chatted and it was good. And then I was recharged for today. So that's amazing. I, I love how this conversation went. I know that we got to wrap up very soon. I want to ask you two last questions, guys. Wait, wait, wait. Before the two questions, I just want to kind of like connect these expectations and commitments to the content, right? On this, on the side of content, which at the end of the day is the same for your clients, right? Like you need to communicate to them what you're expecting from them and letting them know. Cause like you can have certain expectations and either way, the other way around them, they should communicate to you, right? What they're expecting from you. And if you can fulfill yes or no, you can tell them that, Hey, oh, so I'm sorry. Person, right. Like yeah. maybe this is not the right way. You should maybe go to this other person that they can do this better and they can help you out better. Absolutely. And sometimes we just come into, into places, right? Into other businesses with expectations And again, since we didn't communicate it, they maybe does it doesn't meet the requirements that we're expecting, and it's like disappointment. <laughs> so again, just encourage communication all along the way between businesses as well as not only in your personal life, but if you're gonna do some work with somebody, just communicate. Yeah, and it, and we we teach more about how to get that communication started mm -hmm. because I think that's also a very big mm. sticking point for people. Well, what do I say? How do I say it? I oh, bring yes. it up and then it's an argument and da, da, da. And it's just, and it doesn't, it, then it's yes. not effective. Well, so, it, uh, so that's something that we, we, you know, we beautiful. coach on and how to take those steps. And I think the, just, just to, for, for your audience, the first and foremost is to take a step back from the situation and gather your own thoughts, mm. write them on paper, like however, you know, just Don't be uh, reactionary and be emotional in the situation. Just say, okay, I'm going to take a step back. What is it that I'm looking to uh, accomplish here? What do I want? What would be my end goal here? Like, what what do I want out of yes. all of this? And then that way you can uh, come in calmly to talk to whoever that person is and say, hey, like, I, I just, I need to talk to you. Like, here's just something. and. Yeah. Um, and and just start there so it's not so reactionary yeah. and you're responding in a in a calmer manner. I, I, I have a new tagline I've been using, put the poison on paper. Mm. And for so many people, again, there's so many and and I mean Luis just talked about it and I do it too. I'm gonna draw it out and and, and yeah, we can go about 10 minutes uh, longer while well, I'll go a few minutes past uh, 430. <laughs> uh, just to let you know. But um You know, so many times we work up in our head a conversation and I'm going to oh, say this and then they're going to yes. say this. And then what if this and I'm I'm still guilty of this. And nine times out of 10, I can say the situation when it unfolds is never as bad as I make it up in my head. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, like it's never as bad. And and so, uh, one, you got to have the conversation with people just like you guys did yesterday. But two is that if you don't know how to get started. Um, we had a great, uh, great interview with this woman, Jody Chafee, and she said most people's communication in their relationship is either silence or violence. Wow. Either people don't talk about things or they they're so bottled up and angry uh, that it's just a yell and a disagreement about everything. And so our sort of, of middle ground to that silence or violence scenario is 
put the poison on paper. And wow. like, there is such power in just putting pen to paper. And if you're super pissed at somebody, you know, grab that pen and just, uh, you know, write it. <laughs> yeah. But like, ah, there you go. <laughs> you got it, but yeah. Get it, get it down, right? You got to get it out of your body out. because there's mm. no way you can go to somebody and have a level-headed conversation when you're coming, you know, loaded uh, with cortisol and testosterone and just like, oh, I'm All pissed off and I want to talk to you. And it's like, no, no, no. Defuse that bomb first. Oh, beautiful. Um, and make yeah. those points that, that you want to talk about to have that conversation. Well, just saying, guys, like you, yeah. re you read our minds. The next question was like, why don't you share with us a little bit of an action point for people to execute? Yeah. So you just did it. Yeah. You know, the first, you know, with Kate, you know, step back and gather your own thoughts and then yeah. put, put the, the poison, poison on, on paper. paper. That's, <laughs> oh, man, I love the yeah, tagline. Yeah. We even had like a harmonic there. Put the, the poison, poison on paper. <laughs> All right. All right. We can sing now. Thank Sweet. you. Thank you. It's, it's a good line, man. Just like you're. It is a great line, man. It is. Love it. All right, guys. So this is probably my favorite question on the whole show because I know that you've worked with content for a while and, you know, we've known each other for a few months and I love everything that you guys are doing. So the question is like, where will you be if you did not publish? Good question. We uh, would, we would just be husband and wife running <laughs> like our, our own household. Uh, well, you mean where where would we be like in our bit like how would our business be different? Basically, I think is what you're getting at, right? It, I mean, it, it can be it either can be business. Any, like, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't I don't think anyone would know. No one would know us. Well, yeah, we'd be we'd be in we obscurity. Help anyone. But I think uh, I think something and and you know how you guys have helped with you know keeping us on track and and <laughs> so pushing <good>. us along. <laughs> Uh, we recognize we're not the easiest client, uh, but fortunately, there's good there's good communication. You guys there. are amazing, by the way. Um, like, yeah. just saying, is is we that, love you <laughs> that um, it helps us uh, refine our message, and it helps us get yeah. feedback from people. So one, it helps us help people, right? I mean, yeah. there are things mm -hmm. that we say that to us are just sort of in inconsequential like that. Yeah. Of course, that's common knowledge or, hey, we should go share this because it was valuable. But we assign sort of no value to it because like we don't know if, if it just go if it doesn't go to anybody, if it never connects with anybody, like there's not as much value there. And um, for us being able to uh, share the things that we've learned, we say frequently, like by doing what we're doing uh, with relationships and helping couples for us, uh, there's a healing aspect is that mm -hmm. all of the turmoil that we went through over the past 10 to 15 years of our lives before we met is, is not in vain. It's, it's not for nothing. Mm -hmm. It's not because God hates us or, you know, some crazy thing. Like it's literally a setup for uh, the next chapter of our lives. Wow. And without being able to communicate and, and publish, nobody hears the message. We don't get feedback on the message. And, and we're just, I think where Kate was going, like we're just another couple in our household talking about all the great ideas that we have and all the things that we hope that we're going to do with no path to, to executing on that. Oh, th thank you. Wow, yeah. That, we, we need, I, like, a sound of, like, drop the mic sound. Well, that was a gong moment for <laughs> sure. Oh, that was a gong moment for sure. Wow. Yeah, guys, like, that was, like, incredible. Thank you for sharing that yeah. with us. Uh, yeah. The main reason we asked that question is because, like, we use it ourselves as fuel, too, because, you know, the publishing, getting your wor your thoughts into words, like Fonzie says, like, it, it's a therapeutic uh, it has that aspect to it. It helps us not just grow ourselves, but you know, grow with our audience, grow the business, and, and it's just like a win-win-win. Yeah. I don't think we've seen a downside to, yeah. to not execute. Yeah, definitely we have not seen a downside to creating content, to putting yourself out there and publishing. Like, <laughs> from every angle that we've tried to see in it, it's like, man, that is, a, that is super positive. Like, <laughs> let's just keep doing it. That's awesome, guys. Hey, thank you so much for coming thank in. You. How can people find you if they want to if they want to communicate with you? Since that yeah. was the topic, <laughs> if they want to like reach out, learn more about you guys, uh, you know, be one of your students. How can they uh, get in touch? Yeah. So right now, uh, today we just we just launched our podcast, The One Relationship. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a website up for that. It's got all the episodes on there. It has the links to uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And there's a little icon even to send us an email. Uh, we'll be launching uh, a program for uh, couples. 
uh, coming in in October, at the end of October, that will be um, uh, basically like a, a continuous program where people can come in, a sacred community. Uh, but between now and then, uh, we're really just getting our message out with the podcast there Sweet. at the one relationship.com. Uh, we've already taken some great questions and great feedback for people in email. We read all of our emails. Um, it's anonymous and, and we're like, we're helping people in email and, uh, that to us has been super beneficial already. So if you want, uh, send us an email, uh, it's info at katentanner.com, but all of it can be found right there at the one relationship.com. Awesome yeah. guys. We're going to leave it. all the links right below in the yep. description. All you got to do is scroll down yep. just a tiny bit and tap on it. Yeah. Just and done. I mean, we encourage everybody to go check them out, go listen Ooh. to the podcast and you heard the answer to all the emails. So <laughs> send them an email, <laughs> communi communicate, yeah, with communicate with them. Awesome guys. <laughs> Don't don't leave just yet because you gotta experience the Hispanic goodbye. But with that being <laughs> said, thank you so much for tuning into the Content is Profit you. podcast. Thank you guys. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit smash that subscribe button and don't forget to follow us on social media at BizBrosco. That is right. And if you find this episode impactful and you learn to communicate in a better way, <laughs> don't forget to share it and and leave a five star review. Thank, thank you guys. You.